Hey guys, welcome back to Homestead Seed. Today we're gonna to be making a farmhouse cheddar. This is an aged, not for very long, it's like four to six weeks, uh, pressed cheese, and it's super easy to make, you guys. So I'm gonna walk you through all those steps and show you how I do it. So what I do is I follow this recipe here. I can't show you the whole recipe because it's in a book and we want her to get her money's worth. So this is the book that I take this recipe from. It's Home Cheese Making from Ricky Carroll. You can borrow it from your library if you don't want to spend the money to buy it. But I'm telling you, this is a fantastic book, so I highly recommend. So I'm gonna do a four gallon batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four gallons of milk here. Um, I had another video that I'll link in the description on how I separate my cream first and then I top these all off. So I have a full four gallons of milk right here. I have all of my utensils laid out here on a clean towel. I sterilized everything. So it's all ready to go already. Okay, so first we start by heating up the milk and we're gonna heat it up to 90 degrees. Always put your lid on and shake your jar first before you pour it to make sure you get all of the cream off the side of your jar. You want to use all of that. All right, so you guys, this is a five gallon pot. Make sure you get a pot that's one gallon more than what you want to put inside of it. So I can fit four gallons of milk, right? And it's filled up to right there. This would not hold five gallons. Just so you know, get one gallon bigger than what you really need. Okay, so I use an instant read thermometer right here, and then I just stick it in the milk here, okay? And it just came out of the refrigerator not too long ago. Normally I let it warm up a little bit first, but um, we're working from straight from the refrigerator this morning, this afternoon, I guess it's after 12 now. Okay, so it's at 43 degrees, so we need to re raise this very slowly to 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna turn it on to my two, which is like a medium low. And then I will stir it gently with my skimmer every two minutes or so, so it heats up evenly and does not scald on the bottom. And just a little tip, you guys, when if you have uh, your own cow or if you're buying milk from a local dairy, um, make sure you rinse your jars right away with some cool water. Otherwise, it can leave a residue on there and it will be so, so hard to clean. So just take a quick moment after you pour your milk and rinse out your jars. I usually set them aside on a towel after I rinse them and then I'll go back and wash them in a little bit later with hot soapy water. Okay, and if it starts to smell just a little bit, you can add a teeny tiny splash of bleach and that will take away any, any residue that's left up, up in your jar. Or you can do some vinegar if you prefer not to use uh, bleach. All right, that's my little tip for y'all. All right, you guys, this milk came up to 90 degrees. It took a little bit over 30 minutes. I had to pause and go take care of my animals real quick. So um, this is ready for the next step. So the next step is adding in the mesophilic culture. I use a mother culture and freeze them in ice cube trays. So each cube will inoculate two gallons of milk and we're doing a four gallon batch. So this is um, the right amount. If you uh, are using, let's say a freeze dry culture, you would just follow the directions on your packet or your recipe. That would be, um, I believe the recipe here says one packet of direct set for two gallons of milk. Um, just read your directions and it'll tell you what you should add. So I'm going to add in those cubes and let them sit for a little bit. If you have a freeze dry culture, you would just sprinkle it over the top and let it rehydrate for five minutes and then gently stir it in. All right, so this has basically uh, been dissolved into the milk. I've just been gently stirring it with a top bottom motion. You don't stir it like you're stirring a regular pot of, you know, when you're cooking. And I like to do a little bit of this top to bottom stir like this. It helps ensure that all the cream is mixed in since I'm using raw homogenized um, milk. Just make sure it's all incorporated. All right, so now what we're gonna do is put the lid on and let this ripen for 45 minutes. All right, this has, there's my timer going off right there. This has been sitting for 45 minutes and ripening so now what we're going to do is add in our calcium chloride i'm using raw cow's milk so this is not a necessary step 
but it makes a firmer, better curd. And I already had it anyways, because it's the same thing as pickle crisp. So it's just a calcium chloride, and then you just wanna stir that in with a top bottom motion. Just for about a minute or so, just to make sure it's well incorporated into your milk. Now what we want to do is add our rennet solution. So you want to have a quarter cup of cool non-chlorinated water. We have a well water, so um, it's obviously not chlorinated. So we need to have, um, I'm doing a double recipe from what this book says, so I need a full teaspoon of rennet. And this is what it looks like right here. I use animal rennet. And you can buy this at um, any kind of cheese stores online, or you can, I think Amazon might even have it too. Um, I actually have a bigger bottle of this uh, since I seem to make a lot of cheese. Okay, so you just mix one teaspoon of the rennet in with the water. And this is what will help set the curd. So you stir this in for one minute into your milk with an up and down motion. And it starts working pretty quickly within that one minute. So that's why it's, an, it's important you stop stirring before that time is up. So I usually count to 30 in my mind or you can set a little timer for 30 seconds just about good and you don't want to have any motion in your milk when you stop stirring so I like to leave my spoon in here until I can kind of make it stop moving and then we're gonna let this sit for another 45 minutes and we'll check for a clean break all right guys so it's been about 45 minutes so we're gonna check the curd uh, this is my curd knife you can just use any type of long knife that you have that goes to the bottom of your pot and so you just want to stick it in and you kind of turn it sideways and you want to lift it up and you want to see it go into a straight line and fill with whey and that is a clean cut. So what we're going to do is cut our curds into half inch cubes. So we'll go all one direction then we'll turn the, around and go the other direction and then we'll do some diagonal cuts. So I have my grid in like this, so now I'm going to kind of take my knife this way and do diagonal cuts to kind of get horizontal, and then I'll go do the other side too. Okay, so I got all of my curds cut here. Um, some recipes have you um, rest your curd to get them to set up a little bit, but this recipe says to go straight to warming and stirring. So we're going to stir very gently and warm this up to 100 degrees over 30 minutes. So I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes right here on my microwave. I'm going to slowly start warming that up that 10 degrees over 30 minutes. And you want to stir very slowly and gently. And as you bring your curds up, you can, break, you can kind of cut them a little smaller with the side of your spoon. Just be very gentle at this stage. I think I pretty much got everything a little cut up a bit smaller so I'll just continue doing this every few minutes so the curds don't map together the book says every three minutes give it a little stir so maybe I'll you know do some dishes or something while I in between and give it a little stir all right I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the 30 minutes I wore about 15 minutes into our 30 minute heat up. I just wanted to show you what the curds were looking like. So you can see that they've already released a lot of whey and um, you wanna make sure all of your pieces are pretty much the same size. All right, my timer went off. I got this up to 100 degrees, a little bit faster than anticipated, but we're still good. And this is gonna be my last stir here at the end of the timer. It release a lot of whey. So what we're gonna do after this stir right here is we're gonna let everything settle to the bottom of the pot for about five minutes. Just put your lid on, set a timer for five minutes, 
And then we'll be ready to drain it off into some cheesecloth. All right, we're ready to drain off the whey. The curds have been set for five minutes in the pot. They're sunk to the bottom. So you just wanna carefully move your pot to where you need it. I'm gonna save my whey because I'm gonna make some ricotta, ricotta, however you like to say it. Um, and because I'm gonna make some stuffed shells later on this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this whey, make ricotta. And then um, I'll pull my cor curds into there. So since the curds are sunk to the bottom, it makes it way easier. I can just pour the whey straight into my pot. Oop, I had one little curd go in there. And then I'll pour the rest in here. I just washed my hands so they're clean. Got all of that out. So now what you're supposed to do for this type of um, cheddar is kind of like a shortcut cheddar, which I really enjoy because a real cheddar process is pretty lengthy and a lot of steps. So now what we're gonna do is hang this to let it drain. And then it will form like a big solid mass. So I'm just gonna tie a knot in my cheesecloth here. Kind of like make it into a little bag. Lost soldier over there. And then I like to use the same pot that I made the cheese in to hang it over so I can move it out of my sink. Um, I use my knife sharpener, it's clean. And I'll put it underneath my bottom knot here. And then I'll use it to hang over top of my cheese pot here. And it's just deep enough to hold it there. So I'll set this on my table in the other room for an hour and let it drain. All right, so this uh, finished hanging for the hour. I drained off all the way in the pot. So now we're gonna unwrap our bundle and put it in the pot. And we're gonna break it into about walnut sized pieces or like from here to the tip of your finger about that big and then we'll mix in some salt. It came into one big clump there. All those curds kind of formed this one big mass. So I'm just gonna lift this whole piece and plop it in there. And then we're gonna break it up into little pieces. So I, what I like to do is get a chunk of it like this and then just pull it off like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it into smaller pieces. And then we're gonna salt it and then put it in the mold to press. I got it all broken up into little pieces. And for this amount of milk, we are gonna do four tablespoons of salt. I know it may seem like maybe a lot, but a lot of it, I believe, gets lost in the way once it is pressing. So we'll just sprinkle it on. Two, three, four. And this is the special canning and pickling salt I'd like to use for my cheeses. I do pink Himalayan salt when I can, but I really don't want my cheeses to have like a pink, um, hue to them. So this is just canning and pickling salt that I use. It's not iodized salt. And then we just mill it in with our hands. And what I didn't mention is that you want to make sure you keep this really nice and warm. Um, so they'll knit together. Um, I live in Florida and it is June, <laughs> the beginning of June. So it is warm and um, we like to keep our house uh, fairly warm too. It's not even 80 degrees in here. So Sorry, I like to keep my house at 78. So it is, it's pretty warm in here. So once you feel like you got all of your salt mixed in pretty thoroughly into your curds, um, we'll move over to the sink and we'll put this into our mold lined cheesecloth. This is a four to six pound size mold. You'll just have to kind of play along with what you like and what sizes you like and what fits. But um, sometimes when I have a really high yielding cheese batch, it's pretty hard to fit into here. You kind of have to um, fit it in there and then press it down. I don't even know if you could see any of that. Here, let me move you a little closer this way. There, maybe my pot was in the way, huh? And then you kind of just want to work it into the sides of the mold. Get it all in there. And I had someone generously 
create me and build me a cheese press. So that's what I've been using and it has been so wonderful. I am very thankful to have it and it's beautiful. It was um, well done, very, cre very creatively done. So I'll show you guys that when we're ready to put this in the press. So I'm just gonna try to even this out. Then what you wanna do is kinda pull up your, your cheesecloth like this this is actually um, a flour sack towel. I prefer to use these. I feel like the, the normal cheesecloths are so um, brittle, like they're not durable. Almost like you can only use them once, then you might as well throw them away because they're a pain in the butt to wash. So I really like how these work and I've had no issues. All right, and then you wanna fold this over the top and there's multiple um, presses and turns in this one. Um, I think the number goes right on top. Squeeze out any extra way in your towel. And then I put mine on a cookie sheet. And then my press is in the other room. All right, so this is my cheese press. It makes a lot of noise. Just slide it in. You wanna make sure it's in the center of the board on both directions and your followers right on top. Everything's smooth. And then all I do is just tighten these things. And then I have a little level I use here just to make sure I'm getting a level cheese. Um, when I first started, all I did was you put a cutting board with a hand weight on top of my cheese. And it got kind of cumbersome because I kept wanting to like fall over. Then I like to check this side too just to make sure it's level on all sides. Okay, so we look level there. So we're just gonna do this at a, a light pressure. So I like to do it until it's all the way tight and then just a little extra turn. And I'll have to come check this a few times as it presses. So then we'll um, flip and reroute this in 10 minutes. All right, so I got this out of the press and in here, as you can see, it expelled quite a bit of whey right there. So I'm just gonna tip all of that off, out of there and squeeze out my cloth. Right, my hands are clean. I'm gonna take off the follower, put it over here. And just pull the cheese out. You have to be really careful at this point because it's not really knit together all the way yet. You have to be really careful. Sometimes your cheesecloth will stick a little bit and you just gotta kind of have to take your time. And if any little pieces come off, you can just kind of put them right back there. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick this up carefully and flip it over and rewrap it. These always look like this one after that first little pressing. That's totally normal. So gather your cloth back up. I'm gonna put it back in the mold. And make sure you don't have any wrinkles down in there. Just kind of pull it up taut. And then we'll cover it up, put the follower on, and we'll press it at 20 pounds for 10 minutes. All right, guys, let's flip this for our last press here. It should be a little bit more knitted together. Make sure you always clean your hand before you do this. Wow, you can already tell the change, huh? Them coming together. Okay, still do it real carefully though. And then we'll go press this at 50 pounds for overnight or for 12 hours. All right, good morning, you guys. It's the next day and this pressed all night. So we're gonna go ahead and take it out of its mold and put it on a drying rack. So it can air dry for a few days until it's touch dry. And then we can seal it and put it in the fridge to age. These lines here are just from the cloth nothing to worry about. I'm actually going to take it off of here and I'm going to use this same tray to dry it on. Just wipe up the rest of the way at the bottom. 
then I use one of these little gridded drying racks here. And then I use just a regular bamboo sushi mat here. And I usually take a paper towel and just kind of wipe off the outside dampness. Then we can flip it on out. And there she is. Sometimes you might have a little bit of lint or whatever from your cheesecloth and you can just kind of get that off right there. Isn't she beautiful? Okay, so we'll put her right here. And I have um, a little food tent that I put right over top and I put this in my other room right next to my cheese press. I'll show you what it looks like in a couple days when we seal it up. All right guys, so it's a few days later and the cheese is dry enough for us to go ahead and seal. It's still a little damp when you touch it, but it is dry enough to go ahead and seal. So what I did is I got a big bag and I labeled it with what it is when I made it, when I sealed it and when it's ready to eat. And I made a quick note of which book rest I got the recipe from. So I'm gonna seal this on the moist um, setting on my, my food saver right here because um, it is a little damp and I don't want it to suck all the moisture up into the machine and then it won't get a good seal. Been there, done that. All right, so let's go ahead and seal up this cheese. Part in the dishes in the background. Some people choose to wax their cheeses and stuff. I find it more simple to um, food saver it. And then I made the bag extra big, so when I cut it in half, I can reseal half and continue aging the rest of the cheese or portion it out if I need to. So just make sure it's nice and flat up in there. So I'm gonna change my mode to moist and I'm just gonna click vacuum. All right, so when the, this is sealing right now, but what I'll do is I'll store this in my regular refrigerator and I will flip it over every week. Um, Monday is my flip day. So Monday I flip all of my cheeses that I have aging in the fridge. And then we'll be able to eat this in a month. Um, I'll throw in a picture right here. Um, I made this last month, the same recipe, and we opened it um, this past weekend. So I'll throw in a picture right here of what the cheese looks like when it's done aging. Thanks guys, hope y'all give this a shot.